Greetings, humans, and welcome to Space Week for 1 20 2020. China's been on a roll with launches recently. They had a couple more last week a Kwaizhou 1A rocket with the Yinhe 1 Commercial 5G satellite, and a Long March 2D with four satellites the Jilin 1 Wideband 01 HD video satellite, the Tianqi 5 Experimental Low Earth Orbit Comsat, and the Argentinian Earth Observation SmallSats NewSat 7 and 8. On the other side of the Pacific, Ariane Space launched a mighty Ariane 5 rocket from their spaceport in French Guiana with Eutelsat Connect and India's GSAT-30 communication satellites. In the middle of the week, astronauts Jessica Meir and Christina Cook donned their extravehicular mobility units for another lengthy spacewalk to swap out space station batteries. After a scrub on Saturday due to sustained high winds and rough seas, SpaceX pulled off a beautiful Crew Dragon in-flight abort test on Sunday. This particular booster was the very first Falcon 9 Block 5, having flown three missions previously. This time, though, it was destined to retire in a blaze of glory. Its grid fins, landing legs, and second stage engines were removed. The missing engines were replaced with mass simulators to keep things balanced. The tanks were all full of fuel, even though most of it wouldn't be used. About 84 seconds into the flight, just after max Q, the point at which the rocket experiences the greatest aerodynamic stresses, over the course of about 700 milliseconds, a bunch of things happened. The main ones being that the rocket's engines were cut off, and the Crew Dragon capsule's launch abort system was triggered. Eight Super Draco engines accelerated Crew Dragon up and away from the Falcon 9 with about 4 Gs of force. A few seconds later, since the Falcon 9 booster no longer had its aerodynamic nose, it started to tilt. Rockets aren't meant to fly sideways, so it buckled and ruptured, causing the fuel inside to ignite in a huge fireball. And you can hear some really loud uh, cheering in the room. The booster continued on a ballistic trajectory, arcing off into the ocean where it blew up again on impact. Meanwhile, Crew Dragon's Mark III parachutes deployed perfectly, and the capsule came down for a soft water landing that nobody could see very well because of the extreme haze in the air. I'd like to introduce you to Vulcan Point Island. Geographically, it's a very interesting and recursive place. It's a small island, in a lake, in a volcanic crater, on an island, in another lake, on another island, in the Pacific Ocean. Last week, just before sunset on January 12th, Tal Volcano in the Philippines started belching innumerable tons of ash and soot up to nine miles in the air. The volcano is just 31 miles south of Manila and Quezon City, an urbanized region that's home to about five million people. Fearing that a major eruption may be imminent, 40,000 citizens were evacuated from nearby towns and villages, a number that may grow significantly if the volcano keeps voicing its discontent. The Philippines are no stranger to volcanic eruptions. Tal itself has erupted 34 times in recorded history. In 1991, nearby Mount Pinatubo unleashed itself upon the island with the second largest terrestrial volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Now, thanks to synthetic aperture radar images from the Ice Eye satellite, it appears that Vulcan Point is no longer an island. Indeed, almost all the water in the crater lake has disappeared, either vaporized or blown out by the eruption. Dear nature, let's not have another Pinatubo, please. Sincerely, everyone in the Philippines. In less scary news, a very special new planet has been found, by none other than a 17-year-old NASA intern on his third day at work. Wolf Sukir was analyzing some eclipsing binary star data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. 1,300 light-years away, the two stars in the TOI 1338 system revolve around each other every 14.6 days. They can't really be called twins because one star is about 20% larger than our sun and the other is about 66% smaller. When the smaller, cooler star passes in between us and its big brother, it causes a dip in the overall brightness. Wolf Sukir noticed that the timing of one of these dips was off. It turns out that it wasn't the dwarf star eclipsing the larger one, it was a planet. Which brings us to... The term of the week. Circumbinary refers to a planet that orbits two stars. Circum means around, and binary means twofold or double. TOI 1338b is about 6.9 times larger than Earth, and orbits its stars every 93 to 95 days. It's the first circumbinary planet discovered by TESS. 
Only 23-odd circumbinary exoplanets have been discovered before, mostly by the Kepler Space Telescope. The first was way back in 1993. Planet PSR B162026 c, or according to the most recent nomenclature proposal, PSR B162026 a, B, in parentheses, B, <laughs> orbits the odd stellar couple of a pulsar and a white dwarf about 12,400 light years away. Right now, during the premiere of this Space Week episode, astronauts Jessica Meir and Christina Cook are in the midst of their final spacewalk together, at least on this flight. They started at around 6.50 this morning, Eastern Time, and they'll wrap up around 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 18.30 GMT. After watching this episode, make sure to hop over to the Spacewalk livestream right here on Raw Space. The link is in the description. Looking ahead to the rest of this week, on Tuesday the 21st at 12.20 p.m. Eastern, 17.20 GMT, close on the heels of their successful Crew Dragon test, SpaceX will be launching a Falcon 9 with their fourth batch of 60 Starlink satellites. Crew Dragon lifts off from the famous Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, but Starlink launches from nearby Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station just four miles away. Slick 40 has hosted 57 Falcon 9 launches since 2010, with a 15-month gap in 2016 to 2017 due to the explosion of the booster carrying the Amos 6 satellite during a static fire test, which caused extensive damage to the pad and was felt up to 40 miles away. On Friday the 24th at 6 a.m. Eastern, 11 GMT, a Soyuz 2.1A will launch the Russian Ministry of Defense's Meridian M No. 19L communications satellite from Plesetsk Cosmodrome. There won't be any live coverage. Also on the 24th, we have a new moon, in case your skies are clear and you'd like to see some stars. On Saturday the 25th, starting at 5.30 a.m. Eastern, 10.30 GMT, is the final spacewalk of January. Drew Morgan and Luca Parmitano will be back at it for a fourth and final time, testing their repair work on the very expensive Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Cosmic Ray Detector. Then on Sunday the 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. GMT on the 27th, a Japanese H-2A rocket will launch the IGS Optical 7 Optical Reconnaissance Satellite from Tanegashima Space Center into a sun-synchronous orbit. Space Week is also available as an audio podcast at rawspace.podomatic.com and on iTunes at tiny.cc spaceweek. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.